Isabella. Juris, take it away. Thanks. Great, thanks. I'm glad to be here. So I'm going to obviously talk about how I think we can get to Proxima Centauri in about 12 years with new physics. So of course, as been said before earlier, Voyager 1, our fastest probe, um, well, maybe except for New Horizons, uh, is going to take about 70,000 years to get to Proxima Centauri. So I think we can do rather better than that. I'm going to introduce a theory called quantized inertia that I proposed, give you the astronomical evidence for it, tell you about DARPA-funded tests for thrust, and then uh, give you a proposal for 12 year mission to, to Proxima. Just to show you where I'm, I started, this is a galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, and uh, this is a problem I started thinking about. Um, we can look at the Doppler effect and the speed of stars going around the galaxy and work out the centrifugal force, the inertial forces, and they're extremely large, much larger than the gravitational force pulling them into the center of the galaxy, given the, vi given the visible matter that we can see. Um, so the problem is that galaxies should be exploding, but they aren't. So uh, next slide, please. Astrophysicists tend to add dark matter to galaxies to boost the gravitational force to hold the stars in. But I don't like the solution because it's very arbitrary and it doesn't seem scientific to me. Okay, next slide, please. So I've suggested an alternative model for initial mass called quantized inertia. So it works like this. You have an object, uh, yeah, you have an object, uh, for example, this black ball in the center and imagine it's accelerating to the right and quantum mechanics tells us that it sees unreal radiation, which I've shown on this diagram with red, because it's very much like thermal radiation that uh, impinges and pushes on the object. Also, at the same time, relativity tells us that behind the object's acceleration, the horizon forms, and I've shown that with this black area here, this light from this black area can never catch up with the object because it's accelerating away. So quantized inertia, the, the essence of it is, um, is assuming that this horizon damps the UNRU waves. So I've tried to show that by, by showing this blue color here. So the UNRU field is warm in front of the object and it's cold behind it. So you get a pushback. There's more radiation hitting the object from in front than from behind. So it pushes back against its acceleration. And I showed in the paper here in 2013 that this looks like inertial mass. Okay, next slide, please. But that's not the whole story. If the acceleration is extremely low, as shown here in this picture on the right, then the Rindler horizon, this the horizon I showed before, moves back so far that it's about the same distance as the cosmic horizon all the way around the object. So now you can see the inner radiation is, is uh, hot in the center, but cold at the edge near the horizon. And this means that this imbalance that we had before has gone. So this theory predicts that inertial mass will collapse for very low accelerations. And I showed this in the paper back in 2007. Okay, next slide, please. This means that, uh, well, this is exactly what we need to explain galaxy rotation because stars at the edge of galaxies are accelerating very slowly. So the initial, in the theory, the inertial forces they see reduce and it turns out that they reduce, so they're exactly balanced by, by gravity. So it works very well. And I can show this using the data. Um, if uh, Next slide, please. If you look at the expected acceleration of galaxies shown here along the x-axis and the observed acceleration on the y-axis, the data, which I got from Professor Stacy McGough, is shown by the gray, the gray squares and the theory goes right through them. It's the dashed, dashed line here. Uh, so it works very well. And it works very simply as well. So the equation is shown on the right, the velocity to the power four is equal to two times gravitational constant times the visible mass of the galaxy. So you don't need dark matter, times the speed of light squared divided by the Hubble diameter. And I showed that in the paper in 2007. So the theory predicts galaxy rotation very simply and without the need for dark matter. Okay, next slide please. Um, but not, no, not only that, there's, a, there's direct evidence because if you look at a galaxy, in the center, the stars are accelerating rapidly, so they see short Hunter waves, as I've shown on the bottom with this uh, red uh, sine wave. As you go out to higher radii, the Hunter waves lengthen, so you can see that here, 
and at exactly the radius at which the acceleration of the stars um, is such that it produces only waves the size of the cosmos, then that's exactly the point at which the galaxy starts to misbehave. Uh, so that's very direct evidence for quantized inertia and for under radiation. Okay, next slide, please. So the great thing is that if we understand inertia, then we can control it. So if you imagine an object shown here on the right with this black circle that has something inside it accelerating very rapidly, um, then it will see Anu radiation. So I've tried to show that with this, this red and yellow here. And then if the acceleration is so large that the Anu waves are short enough, then we, we can damp them with a metal plate by putting a metal plate above this object. And I've shown that here with the, this gray this gray area. This will then damp the Anu waves. So I've shown that with the blue area. And there will now be, well, in, in a sense, we've created an inertial mass for this object. Acting, acting upwards, or an inertial force acting upwards. So the object will tend to move up, or if you like, down this unreal radiation gradient. This will be more radiation hitting it from below than there will be from above. So this is the idea of a horizon drive, uh, this metal plate acting like a horizon. And it's very useful because usually to move something up, we have to expel things out, out of the bottom very fast, uh, the rocket idea. This doesn't require any propellant. So I discussed that in a paper in 2018. Uh, next slide, please. So I was contacted in 2018 by DARPA and I applied for funding and was awarded $1.3 million of it. And the, the aim of the project, um, the ultimate aim is to show whether we can get thrust out of the theory to either uh, thrust in space or even launch. Okay, next slide, please. So one way to get force from quantized inertia is, uh, looks like this. So um, uh, the schematic on the right, we have a laser. We, we fire laser light into a fiber optic loop. So it accelerates around the loop very fast. And the idea is that it should see short, hot under waves. So I've shown that with the red. And then we put a metal plate beneath it and this should damp the under waves there. And the loop should then try to move down the under radiation gradient so it should move down. And the theory predicts that the force should be, uh, as shown here, pi times the power uh, in watts that you put into the, the laser. The uh, Q factor of the loop, which is the number of turns in the loop, um, the radius of the loop, and then divided by the speed of light, times D, where D is the distance between the loop and the metal plate below it. Um, so next, next slide, please. So, I funded a team in Madrid, Spain at the University of Alcala under Professor Perez Diaz. And they have been doing experiments and they have some, some positive results. So uh, here's the, the most interesting result is shown in bold here. So the first, the first row here has very low power, but when the power is boosted, um, so the power into the laser was 0 0.129 watts. Uh, the radius of the loop was 15, about 15.2 centimeters. Quantized inertia predicts that there should be a thrust of about six micronewtons, and we saw a thrust um, averaged over a few experiments of 10 plus or minus six micronewtons, which is consistent with it. So one, uh, one point here is that this represents a force to power ratio of 0 0.08 newtons per kilowatt, which is better than the ion drives used in, in satellites at the moment. And it's doing this um, without fuel. So this just requires electricity, energy from solar panels, for example. Um, okay, next slide, please. So part of the DARPA project, uh, well, phase three of it that we're now in, is um, aimed at enhancing the thrust. So there are several ways to do this. And one way to do it would be to use, uh, instead of normal glass, uh, use fluoride glass, which has um, from 10 to 100 times the transmission of, of normal, normal glass. Um, so we could do that. And it would also be very beneficial to use, instead of a coil of loops, so have the light going around a, a coil, to have simply one, one loop. Um, but if we do that, we'd have to have a whispering gallery, uh, what's called a whispering gallery resonator. And a good example of that is St. Paul's Cathedral in, in London. 
if you stand in a gallery of St Paul's and you, you say something, the sound travels around the gallery very effectively and uh, keeps going around the circumference like that. And that's because the sound waves are uh, exactly the correct wavelengths that they, they do not self-interfere when they meet their, when they come around again. Um, an, an integer number of waves can fit within the circumference. And if we can do this with light, the uh, transmission would be um, uh, very effective. So uh, that's one aim that we had. So it's possible that we could improve the 0 0.08 newtons per kilowatt to, well, theoretically, eight newtons per kilowatt, which would be uh, very good. This, this is getting close to the, uh, um, the, the thrust to power ratio that we need to start launching things or levitating them. And it certainly enables interstellar travel, um, as I'll show you now. So next slide, please. Okay, so the idea is to use a safe uh, 400 fission reactor. Um, I'm sure there are, are different alternatives available, but um, this, this reactor was pointed out to me by, by Travis Taylor. It's about half a ton and it provides 100 kilowatts of, of power. And then you have the mass of the, uh, the QI horizon drive, which should be fairly light, about five kilograms. Camera shield and antenna, I'll show you the design in a minute, 50 kilograms, so the total is uh, 567 kilograms. And with, with relativity at half the speed of light, that would go up to uh, about 654 kilograms. The force produced by the uh, reactor and the horizon drive would be about 800 newtons. And that would give you an acceleration of 1.3 meters per second per second. So the idea would be to accelerate at that acceleration for 3.7 years up to half the speed of light. The distance travel would be one light year and then cruise for a bit at half the speed of light for 4.6 years and then decelerate for about um, 3.7 years. So this means that we could get to Proxima Centauri in 12.3 years from an Earth point of view in the Earth frame and 11.7 years in the ship frame. Okay, next slide, please. So this is an initial spacecraft design. So in the center, you can see the uh, laser loop. So the laser is here producing 1.8 kilowatts. It goes into the, the loop, the whistling gallery loop. And uh, it's not entirely clear how we can do this yet, but we need to somehow get the light to stay within, uh, within the glass. So this would be the whispering gallery resonator. Then next to that, this gray area shows the unroof shield. So this will damp the unroof field in front of the loop and pull it to the right. And when we want to, when we want to slow down, this will be rotated round to the, the other side and that, that will then, then pull it back. Um, so obviously there's a shield um, uh, to shield it from interstellar dust. And research shows that you need at least about four centimeters of aluminium to do this, but I've shown a sort of matrix here, uh, spread out a little bit. The reactor is uh, here, this red area. Um, there's a, a camera and an antenna as well. Uh, so this is, this is one of the problems, how to, how to get the information back from Fox and the Centauri. There's a freeze transmission equation, and it turns out that uh, it may be possible if the receiving area is about solar system scale. So we need something like an expanded deep space network and use very high, high frequencies of, of radio waves. Um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, so a summary is that quantized inertia explains inertia for the first time. It's an alternative to dark matter. It's got very good astronomical evidence behind it. It predicts a horizon drive, what you might call an electric rocket, um, fuel satellites, um, and it enables interstellar travel. So we have tests showing QI thrust of 0 0.08 newtons per kilowatt. Uh, that's theoretically enhanceable to eight newtons per kilowatt. And we're going to try and do that in the next year with the DARPA funding. And uh, QI enables travel to Proxima Centauri in, in 12 years this way. Okay, so any questions? Thank you very much. I think we have time for a quick one here. So the submitted question is, doesn't the UNRWA radiation bathe the object uniformly and not just in the direction of movement? Yes, it, it does. But the idea is that 
the acceleration in, in the laser loop is so great that the UNRWA waves are short enough that they can be damped asymmetrically by um, a metal structure, by a metal plate placed on one side of the object. So normally they would bathe it uniformly, but we're making an asymmetry in the field. Does the UNRWA shield absorb the extra momentum? Well, in, in a sense, it produces momentum because it's, um, uh, in a sense, where we're introducing an inertial force. Okay. Have you thought about beaming the energy to your drive instead of using an onboard fission power source? Oh, no, I haven't I hadn't thought of that. That's, that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how possible that is, but yeah, that's an interesting, interesting suggestion. Um, why have particle accelerate accelerators not seen this effect in beam dynamics? Uh, they have. A paper was published this this year by by Lynch, uh, somebody called Lynch L Y N C H, and they have seen Conway radiation in the deceleration of um, positrons hitting hitting crystal targets. So it has now been seen. Would this produce any kind of radiation coming out of the vehicle? It would only, the only radiation would only be perceivable by the accelerating objects within the, uh, within the vehicle, not, not from outside. Is that it, Stephen? Got one more. I've got two more, but all right. As your velocity becomes non-negligible compared to C, does the cosmic horizon appear asymmetric? This requires more watts per Newton as you go faster? Yes, good question. Would it become asymmetric? Um, yes, it would certainly change shape, but I, I don't know exactly how I'd have to, that would have to be modeled. How well does quantized inertia do at explaining galaxy clusters, bullet clusters, CMB peaks and other non-rotation curve evidence for dark matter? Yes, um, well, the bullet cluster, it explains that because the, um, the galaxy clusters are rotating and quantized inertia predicts that light will bend as it crosses a rotation axis. So if you look at the bullet cluster, you see that the apparent dark matter is at the two ends, which would also be predicted by, by quantized inertia. Okay, that's all that we have time for. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Dr. McCullough, thank you. Appreciate it.